The Two Forms of Good Narrated by Jenny Lin Good is not a single category or action. The good we are most familiar with and understand best is the goodness of mothers. This first kind of goodness we see displayed in volunteers. Most of these are women. The feminine form of goodness is empathetic. It gives us hugs and commiserates with us. Feminine goodness meets people in their time of need. It meets us where we are at. The feminine saint has patience with babies, old people, and the sick. The feminine good is also present when people fall on hard times. It is available when others think the person is not deserving or has brought the calamity upon himself. Feminine goodness extends to the undeserving, the unwashed, the destitute, and even to the needy person who we see as of no use to anyone else. Feminine goodness is compassionate and emotional. The masculine form of good is more calculating. This is true even though the masculine good requires men to run into burning buildings, into a hail of bullets, and onto frozen rivers to save a struggling deer. On the other hand, the masculine good may result in the doing of evil. It is men who view the masculine good as requiring the killing and hurting of others. Masculine goodness is analytical and logical. The masculine good can be corrupted by emotion or feminization. Feminine compassion can be stifling. Masculine goodness becomes toxic when feminized. Crime occurs when a man becomes emotionally directed and loses his logical compass. The feminine good is compassionate because it is not logical. Care for a child or the elderly cannot be done based on the expectation of a reciprocal benefit. The masculine good is analytical. But it does lack empathy. This is why men overcome by emotion become toxic. The criminal often feels betrayed and cheated and robbed of a benefit he thought was his due. Crime is the criminal's effort to get justice. When seeking justice men will step over the line and become criminals. But this behavior is not analytical, it is emotional. What men need is a way to stop emotion from corrupting his analytical power. This is a problem because analytics is to a large degree calculations based on reciprocity. Reciprocity is founded on accounting. Preferentially, the things we do ought to be given a monetary value. The good we do ought to be embedded in a cash economy. Indeed, another way of looking at the two forms of good is to see the feminine good as attached to the home and expressed through domestic activity. The masculine good is attached to the workplace and defined in economic terms. This does not mean what women do has not economic value, it does. Homemaking ought to be paid for. But what a woman does is not income-directed. The woman does not care for the home, for the monetary remuneration. The good that a woman does makes the income derived from the good a secondary good. Income is not the primary motivation for the good women do. Exchanges are analytical organizations designed to help men think logically. This requires accountability. Men must think in terms of the economic benefits and costs of what we do. Exchanges promote cash-based accounting because only a cash-based economics is compatible with analytical thinking. An analytical exchange creates no debt. Analytical organizations eschew liabilities. The use of cash eliminates debt and freeloading. Cash-based accounting is the best way to achieve objectivity. 
Analytical organizations are developed by people looking to pursue logical responses to emotional situations. Males need accountability. Males are persons who seek analytical solutions. Unemployment is an emotional response to an actual problem. Problems are generated when emotive persons seek to deal with problems that need a logical solution or when analytical persons respond logically to an emotional situation. Each situation requires its own solution. It is necessary to make a clear distinction between emotive and analytical forms of emasculine good. When we do good or seek to do good, using other people's money, this is an emotional reaction to an analytical issue. Ultimately, such responses are based on emotional authority, not analytical authority. We cannot access the wealth belonging to others without some form of emotional authority over them. The authority figure tells us this is the right thing to do. Possibly they virtue signal that responding emotionally to this kind of situation makes them a better person than those who resist the impulse to act emotionally. Such calculations are based on how the decision makes the person feel, not on a careful calculation as to costs compared to benefit. We cannot do a cost-slash-benefit calculation on an emotional crisis because we cannot possibly discern costs where there is no accounting. Nor can we calculate costs if we are not the ones paying the cost. Authoritarians react emotionally to one issue and end up creating another issue, without really solving the original problem. This happens when emotions guide reactions to what are analytical problems. We ought to see the difference between feminine emotion and authoritarianism. Females will see hurt and respond to the problem in a very personal way. The feminine responds personally and invests herself personally in the person hurt. This is why the number of women in the nursing and teaching professions is high compared to me. Women care about people and invest themselves personally in the other person's life. This is not the case with the feminized man or autocrat who takes from others the resources he uses to respond to a perceived want. This activity is sometimes legal and based in law and oft-times outside the law, but the structure of the response is the same. An emotional response is made to a problem needing an analytical answer. The resources are always gleaned from some other person, legally or otherwise. Exchanges are organizations designed to ensure analytical responses are made to analytical problems. Exchanges ensure accountability. Accountability for the costs we create requires cash, specifically a cash-based economy. However, we need to understand the nature of cash and how to strip it and the economy of liabilities. Cash cannot be owned in the way this world understands ownership. Cash is units of account. Units of account cannot be owned any more than inches or miles can be owned. Cash is a measure of value used in accounting, not a thing with value that can be valued. Cash is the value expressed in a numerically scalable way. To believe money has value is to think three feet can be used to bridge a gap in your sidewalk. 300 units of value is 300 units of cash. A cash account with 300 units of value in the credit column represents a value of goods and services you can claim at any time. Those 300 units are not real, they symbolize a measure of value without being a thing of value. To have analytical activity in the economy requires the existence of cash accounting. Exchanges are set up as a system of cash-based accounting. To set up an exchange requires each applicant to set up a cash account with the exchange. Prospective members of the exchange open an account with the exchange. 
he or she deposits assets of any kind with the exchange. These assets are transformed into equity and recorded as units of account in the member's account. Equity is deposited in the member's account in the form of preferred share units. Preferred shares is contracted to prefers when used as a medium of exchange and a unit of account. All cash or kind donated or invested in the exchange is deposited in member accounts as prefers. Deposits are paid into the member's account as credits. Goods and services are preferentially purchased from the exchange using the prefers account of the member. Purchases made by a member are recorded as payments made from the debit column. This is how a cash account works. Members are credited for the hours of work they do. The rate paid is a standard amount defined as a living wage rate. All earnings are paid in prefers as a credit to the member's account. All purchases result in a debit to the member's account. Credits paid in result in an increase in the member's prefers account. Debits paid out reduce the number of prefers in the member's account. Payments to members who create value for the exchange are paid into their account and debited from the account of the person who received the benefit. Anyone can set up an exchange and promote a cash-based economy. The existence of an exchange gives members the ability to be held accountable for the costs they create and the purchases they make. Accountability for costs one creates is the same thing as becoming accountable for one's political jurisdiction. Accountability means the citizen systematically takes over responsibility for the community from the state. A citizen is a caretaker for their community. Citizens are organized into sectors. If a plumber is required, the sector responsible for providing plumbing services is contacted and assigns a plumber. The plumber is paid by a credit to his or her account. The client pays by having a debit added to his or her account. This short essay is not meant to discuss the operation or structure of an exchange in detail. The exchange model is touched upon only to illustrate the two forms of good and how better to provide the analytical masculine good. The argument is that analytical good is synonymous with a cash-based economy. Harm is done when subjects are not held to account for the costs he or she creates. Exchanges hold people to account using cash-based accounting.